Hello, everyone. Um, since we are already two minutes past the hour, I think we can start. We have we have a decent amount of people here already. Um, I'll be today's host. Um, my name is Daniel Hiller. I think everyone who is attending knows me. Um, okay, so the meeting will be recorded, but please lock your attendance in today's meeting minutes. I've um, put the Google Doc link into the chat. Um, hopefully, everyone has got it. I'll post it again, just in case. Um, so let's start. Um, the recording will today will be recorded to the cloud, as uh, Andrew has told me. He'll be able to pick it up. So I don't have the have to bother with the, the local recording, which is a great thing. <laughs> I can just use the browser, which works better for sharing. I hope everyone can understand me and see the shared screen. Uh, okay, so so. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, okay, let's start. Uh, welcome to the Qubit community meeting. It's um, October the 9th in 2024. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to make a couple of announcements. Uh, you can join the community uh, by adding your organization to the adopters markdown. You can follow us on Twitter. You can um, look at the community page where you will find a lot of information about how to contribute to the project. And you can uh, also join as a GitHub project member. Someone wanting to say something? Sorry, Daniel. Okay. I think my mic might have been open. <laughs> okay. No problem. No problem. Uh, please, if you don't want to speak up, don't forget to, uh, to mute your uh, microphone so that um, unwanted noise is not disturbing other people. Thanks. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask whether we have any new people that haven't yet introduced themselves to the community and would like to do so. Um, yes, hi. Uh, my name is Neil Dotan. I'm uh, new, uh, working in uh, Red Hat in uh, Hubert uh, in the network uh, core area. And um, this is the first time I'm joining this call. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, then. Um, anyone else? Um, I see a name I didn't recognize yet. Uh, it's called Thomas David Greedle. Um, he's, um, or they are like um, uh, addressed as joining. I'm not sure if uh, the joining has uh, been working for them. So if you would like to introduce yourself, uh, please go ahead. Okay, I figured that these are network problems. Okay, um, first of all, then we um, have the schedule check-in. Currently, we are still um, inside the uh, Qubit 1.4 release schedule. Uh, we are um, at uh, the 9th of October, so it means that feature freeze will be uh, the next milestone that we're going to reach, um, which will happen on uh, October 20, 22nd. Um, and after that, there will be, be the release uh, around the 29th of October. That's uh, the uh, latest milestones for this month. Mm. With respect to call for paper check-in, I think we are, oh yeah, I see now that there is something that has been added. 
a figure by Andrew, which is uh, the KubeCon EU25, which will be in London on 1st to 4th of April. Uh, presentation submissions are due to 24th of November, and the schedule will be announced on January 15th, um, 2025. If you want to take a look at further events, please go ahead and take a look at the uh, Qbert Community uh, Events Wiki page. Um, I'm going to post the link into the chat so you can take a look. Then let's go over to the agenda and notes. Um, first of all, um, I have something that is a project that, um, yeah, that was, was came, coming out of the discussion of the renaming of the SIG code quality label. There was a group of people who are using um, the SIG code quality label. So there should be some interest in uh, forming a group um, which brings me to uh, that uh, created issue um, where you can uh, chime in how you want this uh, code quality working group, which we resided on, uh, would be the best point, uh, would be the best um, um, formation for um, a, a, a a um, organization of people who are uh, looking for code quality improvements. So we figured out that the short term goals for such a working group should be the focus on the improvement of the code quality itself. And in the long term, that uh, this working group should create an intersec process that identifies, agrees, and addresses code quality issues. Again, the issue is, um, I would probably um, copy it and uh, post it into the chat so that you can take a look at this. Um, I have uh, volunteered to create the PR, um, but I would probably want to collect um, comments on the, uh, on the issue itself. Um, and I have also added a uh, list for people interested in participating to the Cuba document. So please, if you're interested, uh, chime in there. I see like, I have already seen that people, three people um, have um, added their GitHub handle. Um, so um, I would um, um, add those uh, to, the, to the working group. Okay, um, again, that, this is like, um, this is the description um, where we uh, basically just are saying that we want to uh, create a working group uh, that has the goals I already have mentioned. Any questions to that? Yeah, not, not question, but... I think it's mentioned in the agenda, but we need some sort of like, yeah, forum or something to discuss topics, I guess. Yeah. Um, so you are uh, saying that we uh, should definitely do something like a, a weekly meeting or something. Um, I would probably propose like a weekly interval as we do for most of the other things, since um, this at least I think would, would make uh, sense in the initial phase and we can then iterate on probably reducing the interval um, at some point in time. But I think like uh, weekly meetings would make the most sense. So you would probably like triage, um, like code quality pull requests and stuff and or like uh, uh, code quality issues. Um, yeah, also I would probably want to ask whether those Meetings should be recorded for people who are interested but can't attend. What do you think? Sounds fine to me, yeah. Okay, so if I understand correctly. Can, can we have these uh, decisions taken as part of the PR that introduces the working group? Like, like what is the... 
do we need a meeting or not when how uh, how long is the meeting what is the frequency what needs to be discussed in that meeting stuff like that yeah i mean the pull request would uh, essentially add those things uh, to the working group um charter i think so i would probably uh, want to have that discussed up front maybe we could just use the issue discussing this um, so that I would not have to like uh, reiterate over the PR all the time. I think with uh, the issue would make more sense to discuss these things. What do you think? I don't know. Usually we, we do iterate on the actual PR that does add stuff, but uh, I don't mind. If you prefer to do the iteration first on the issue, fine. Mm. Okay, okay. You can also set a kickoff meeting for the uh, for the group that is interested, so so they will come with opinions. But as you want, yeah, that, that's that's a fair um, fair thing to do. I think like uh, like uh, create a one up meeting um, where interested parties will be attending, and we will discuss all these things. That makes I think that even makes the most sense. Thanks for the for the proposal. I think I'll do that. Okay. Um so if there is nothing else to this um, agenda uh, item, I would probably um, give uh, room for the next one. I'm not sure who actually um, brought that up. Like this is about announcing intention to bump the network binding plugins to beta. Um, maybe Eddie, you know, or are you uh, the one who brought that up? Yeah, I just wanted to raise it here so so it will not be too too surprising. But this is the intention. I hope to do it in the tomorrow or next early next week. Okay. I know that was there was one uh, one feedback about this about some uh, parts of safety in terms of our ability to support it with vendors that uses it so i'm going uh, we are going to also include uh, an update to the documentation that adds this uh, notice about the limited support when the when a plugin is used and the, all the and the and that if there are issues there they should consult with the vendor of the plugin so that that is going to be added as well as part of this but if someone else has more uh, concerns if even if we beyond what i said then uh, i will be glad if they contact me is there something like an issue or a pull request that uh, people can comment on or how should they contact you? No, I will they can, uh, I will open an issue, but if there is someone wants to tell me something before that, then please do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, then um, next issue is by Alai Patel. Um, this is about DRA support in Qbert. Um, Alai, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to share uh, with folks here. Uh, there was a meeting yesterday to discuss um, uh, the design proposal for DRA support in Qbert. Um, I have attached the notes that was collected from that meeting here. Uh, if anyone wants to take a look or uh, you know, add thoughts there. Um, <clears throat> I think the next steps are clear. Um, we have, based on the feedback received, I have to go ahead and address that on the uh, design document. Um, 
it it seemed like yesterday um we ran out of time uh, i was just wondering folks who attended yesterday do we uh, need to schedule another uh, call um to discuss thoughts um it, it seemed like there were some um question that that were that were unanswered um so i was just curious uh, to get a pulse on that okay uh i see in the chat uh people are responding so um i i would be sh shooting for the same time uh next week same date and same time uh for another meeting i'll give a heads up on the mailing list um if we need to reschedule please respond there and uh we can take this offline uh thanks daniel sure um okay so uh it seems there are no more agenda items and notes so we can switch to the open floor um next item is also by me there were questions around the Hacktoberfest participation of Qbert um and actually um I just want to uh, want to point out that we are participating um but not all repositories inside the Qbert org are participating so what actually is required for a uh, repository to participate to Hacktober, on Hacktoberfest in Hacktoberfest, um, it has to have the topic of Hacktoberfest added to uh, its description or to its details, to, or to the repository details. And we have a couple of repositories that have this. So I let me just. Uh, uh, open um, quickly um, the command I did on an, on another uh, pull request that I that I uh, looked at so we at the at the moment uh, the uh, repositories that have the topic Hectoberfest are uh, qubit 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 ci user guide github io and project infra so these are the uh, repositories where when you add pull requests on that and you are participating in Oktoberfest and the pull request gets accepted, this will be accounted towards your account um, of the Oktoberfest challenge. For details about the Oktoberfest, I've added the link to the Oktoberfest itself uh, into the meeting notes. Um, so you can, I think it's still open to participate. Um, and in general, I think Everyone who um, gets four pull requests accepted will get either like a physical gift in form of a T-shirt or a, a virtual uh, gift, I think. And you can also swap the physical gift to uh, planting trees, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure exactly what, what that is. I, please refer to the October first page itself. Uh, Daniel, do you know if uh, it's the author of the PR that decides to that that PR participate to the Oktoberfest, or it's us that we should label it? Or actually, if I remember correctly, we don't have to. Normally, the PR author doesn't have to do anything. I think he just has to um just has to open the pr at the right time so i think like prs that have been opened before october the first i think they will not be able to participate but any other pr that is open after october first will automatically participate should it be inside any of the repositories that have the topic october first Okay, because I, I remember that uh, last year with Andrew, we uh, create some issues, uh, like the good first issues uh, for explicitly for Oktoberfest, but um, um, we didn't do it this year. So that's why I was a bit surprised when, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. And, and, and it was the same at my place. So I was just thinking, to be honest, I completely forgot about Hacktoberfest this year. And but we still, I think, we have a pool of uh, good first issues that people yeah, yeah. could pick up if if they want to participate. So we should be, 
at least pretty much set. I talked to Andrew about that and he was also saying, okay, there is still a couple of issues that have the good first issue and they should qualify for people who uh, want to pick those up. Okay, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, good first issue, that should be good for, uh, for that. Okay, cool. I think so too. Um, okay, uh, my, my question about that was, but I think that should be probably directed to uh, Andrew, I think. Um, since he's not there, I'm going to ask him uh, on another channel um, because, or what, how do people how do people feel inside here? What what would be would Cupid community be a repository that would fit Hacktoberfest PRs? What do you think? I'm not sure about the design proposals. Uh, I would I would not think that first time contributors will have an easy time uh, working on those. So not sure. That's a good point. I think yeah, design proposals are out of scope uh, for being Hacktoberfest issues. That's that's true. Although I would say, like for example, um, there is a couple of. Uh, of documentation, uh, markdown um, files inside the repository that could probably like uh, be corrected with respect to spelling errors or something like that. So that would also be something that I was thinking about. But yeah, you're right. Like these are proposals are out of scope for Hacktoberfest. That's true. Okay, um, then last call for the open floor. Okay, I think we're then done with the open floor. Um, I would prop then switch over to the pull request that needs attention. Let's take a quick look. So let's see. This one is a backport, I figure, by Alice. Um, that should be good. This is also a backport by Shelley. This one is a draft PR by Brian. I don't think we need to look at that. Um, this is also something that was opened by Alice and there is like 17, um, 17 uh, comments on that one. So, okay, and this is by Ormurgi. Wow, we have lots of open PRs today. This is by Andrew from yesterday or Murgi near Dothan. Uh, Daniel? Yes, Alicia. I might have one thing for the open floor uh, or for PRs, especially because I see Mike there. So um, maybe at a, the either we can do it later or. Uh... Or no, as you prefer. Um, I I don't have a strong opinion on that. Uh, is that a comment by you that we should record the meeting? Um, no, no. I I have a PR uh, um, that uh, changes um, uh, how a label is set. It um, I put it that in. It's actually about the exporter service. So since Mike's here, maybe he knows better. But um, in general, um, basically there is a bug apparently that we generate, uh, we assign some some names and they are too long. Um, but they are changing the way how we assign, what we assign to that label. So if there were, my concern is there were, um, tooling using the previous um, 
label and, and value there, uh, they might be broken. Um, I don't know if this is a problem with the export or... Uh... Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it seems like it could definitely be a problem. We, um, we had a similar issue in CDI and we came up with a special function for naming things. Um, but I'll take a look at this one. I don't know how it slipped by me. Yeah, and yeah. it was limited by Shalia, but um, yeah, I mean, general, I think we should uh, be still to be compatible, backward compatible with the uh, with the filtering. So. Thanks. Okay. For, thanks for bringing us yeah, up. Like Michael, I've just I've just uh, CC'd you on the PR. I uh, hope that works. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, maybe we should change our like um, also like the pull requests that need attention about uh, looking at needs approval review review labels since we have that now, right? So let me see if we see something with that. Uh, by the way, Daniel, the, the label is great. I was using it today. So. Yeah, I think it, it should it should be um, should be used. So um, maybe we are just. I would just probably like um, uh, do a, an ad hoc query where we select um, with this label needs approval. You should be the right one, right? Okay, then we should probably sort by the least recently updated and then we should probably see something this one for example this is old this one by Nachshon. um this has an lgtm but that also needs a rebase um i'm not sure did anyone look at that i see at least uh lubo was looking at this one Just sorry for uh, barging in. What, what, what are we doing now? We are going over PRs. Yeah, actually, we are looking at pull requests that need attention. Yeah, so can we go over the ones that, uh, I mean, we the one that are uh, needs approved, this one, that one, this is what you mean? Or, or I mean, we are ah, the, so the we're asking that... what we are looking at, right? So, yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. What's so, the so we would. Would... Yeah, sure. We were discussing. Um, so Alicia was, I was just bringing up that we have this needs approval review uh, label um, introduced recently. So this label actually uh, marks a pull request that have an LGTM, but don't have an approval review. Um, and they uh, get that label after two weeks. So this would be something uh, that uh, approvers would be able to filter by and would, would uh, be able to take a look at older PRs that would actually like, um, would be, um, so those would be in the state, they are LGTM'd by a reviewer, but they are not approved. So an approver would probably take a take, need to take a look at this and approve it or um, give it back to the, to the reviewer. That was our intention of the, of the label. Does that make sense? Did I explain it good enough? Yes, but I guess it's okay. like uh, if you raise it here as a, in a list, it will it will just create a, a pressure on approvers to to look at them. So I'm not. I mean, I I personally will prefer that you that we will go over the PRs that got no LGTM and go to not approve and nothing in the last, for example, week, and that's it. That's like uh, just to understand what's on the table at the moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I may maybe not everyone agree so. So you're saying like something like this probably, but yeah, then we would even have even more. So like this last list that I uh, proposed was just only fifty PRs long, and this one has one hundred fifty five. Where no, the, the last week, 
Can you limit by the time? Um, yeah, wait a second. You would probably um, like created in the last week. And what would be, yeah. be with those PRs that have been created before last week? Do we just leave them open? Every week we do. If we go every week, then. But yeah. I don't. I don't have any. Maybe you are right. Like what, what the previous filter, but it feels like what would we do here in this meeting to expedite the treatment of those of that PRs? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean you're right in a way. I would probably say uh, we should probably look at PRs where people outside uh, the attendees of the meeting, for example, have created things. So like outside uh, first time contributors, for example, so that they don't get like stale PRs, something like that. I think like uh, people who are attending this meeting should be good enough to, uh, or should be good with, uh, with getting reviews from their peers. So for example, this one could be something. Um, this is like someone who uh, doesn't seem to be a regular contributor um, and he opened a PR five days ago. Um, I at least see that Federico added a, so a uh, Victor added an okay to test. And this seems to be good enough to, um, to have some action on that one. So this seems to be okay. Um, but yeah, so something like, uh, like this, I would propose to go, for example, like this one. Also, this is like, Another pull request by someone else outside of the community. But yeah, so this look. Actually, I think we should filter by um, pull requests that are from uh, that have been opened from people outside the community who don't have many uh, comments on them. So that should be something I think that we that we could look at. So at the moment, I don't see many of these. So all the others that I've been seeing have been contribution, have been having uh, comments on them. So we should be okay for now, if I understand that correctly here. Okay. Then let's switch to the next topic. Wait a second, let me quickly. This one is the thing I think, right? No, this is not the one, let me see. This is a pull request. I just wanted to add this to the, to the pull request of intention. Okay, so then um, next will be the mailing list review. Um, Andrew has kindly already brought up two things that he would want us to take a look at. Um, although I can remember at least that there is already a discussion going on on that one, but people might be wanting to chime in here. So I figure that my the size of my uh, my browser could be too uh, too small to for people to read. So, um, do we need to discuss this? I think that that we have discussion on this one, or do we do we need to do anything about this one? So, to bring I everyone there's, into the there's enough discussion already. Sorry, yeah, to interrupt the yeah, we we don't want to follow the the original plan laid out in the in the first post anymore. So, yeah. There's discussion around it already. Okay, great. Okay, then let's quickly go to the next one. And this one, this is by Andrew. I don't know. I think he just wanted us to wanted to mention. So um, for people who have uh, missed this, 
Um, Andrew is uh, um, preparing a non-conference for the 1.5 development cycle. Um, I think like in a nutshell, um, there will be a follow-up email with uh, Zoom rooms and uh, collaborative document links. So um, everyone uh, interested in taking part in the 1.5 development cycle, please watch out um, the Cupid on the Cupid Dev mailing list for these um, as a quick shout out for everyone to know. Okay, anything else uh, regarding mailing list review? Did I skip something or did anyone want to mention something with respect to mails he wrote and haven't been getting attention enough? Mm, okay, so I would say we can go on to the bug scrub. Andrew already did triage this issue at least um, to bring to our attention. So let me take a quick look. So Dosubot has answered already. Um, I, at a glance, I can see whether that is somehow, did anyone look at that issue? I think I saw, I saw this and someone someone already answered on that one. Or am I wrong? Hmm. Okay, at least uh, with respect to triaging this one, I would say this should be um, sick compute, right? Look at the operator logs. Oh, that's long. Mm -hmm. Is anyone able to take this one? Yeah, you can talk to me. Igor, I can barely understand you. You're a bit gobbled, or is there someone else talking about that? Ah, oh, yeah, Igor, I'm going to see you. Thank you, Igor. Okay, then next, we want to take a quick look at like fix this, let me see. Now that hardly counts as a real flake fix. This is a quarantine. This is something by Kike. We did add something like an error wrapping that was with respect to network debugging, if I understand correctly. And Orshaval fixed the flaky test for two weeks ago already, but still nice, nice work. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
so then I would probably do a last call for anyone who wants to mention something or talk about anything. Uh, one thing for me, um, I would probably um, need a bit of support from a couple of people um, to take a final look at the uh, community pull request that um, that have been um, created by me um, for the working group Arch. So if anyone has the time to take a quick look, and to finalize this one, uh, this is about the arch um, arches or the working groups for architectures, like for SV90X and ARM. Um, so if people, it is approved, but we just need an LGTM. So uh, people within the uh, 2B working groups, please take a final look whether everything is correct. And then please attach or just get, leave an LGTM so that we can get this in and that we can get you um, into your correct working groups. That said, I would say um, I can give you at least 17 minutes back, which is great to see. Um, so uh, with that said, thanks everyone for attending the Cupid community meeting. Hopefully see you next week and have a nice rest of your day and have a nice rest of your week. Thank See you. you, folks. Bye. Thank you, Daniel. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.